God of the universe, maker of the stars, who am I? All right. Well, hello and welcome to yet another uh, episode of Life on Purpose. We are thankful that you are with us, whether you are listening on or watching and listening on YouTube or listening on podcast. Uh, we are thankful for you guys tuning in. Uh, we've gotten some great response from some of you guys, and we really appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> if you want to reach out to us at any point with any questions or comments you guys have or the feedback, just something you were encouraged by, um, <clears throat> excuse me. You can reach us at onpurpose at mail.com. Um, that is seen by myself, uh, top dog over here, uh, <laughs> Dave and Ryan. And so <laughs> just feel free to shoot an email over there. Um, so here we are. Uh, it is someday. I'm not. Yeah, it's the 19th of October. Uh, so coast <laughs> over. I got to remind myself what day it is. Just starting to catch up on sleep here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Sukkot is over. Um, you know, Dad, I'm pretty familiar with how your Sukkot was. But hey, how was your Sukkot? Well, you know, it was pretty good. I ended up uh, down in North Florida and um, met some new folks down there, uh, some acquaintances, a uh, little strengthening of acquaintances with people that uh, I had known. You know, I've got a lot of people that I have corresponded with through the years that I don't know what they look like. They know what I look like, which is really kind of weird because yeah. – Somebody will walk up to me and say, you know, you look just like you look. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, okay, do, I got that one. Do they ever but, say uh, they imagine you'd be shorter? Yeah, yeah, because, you know, they most people <laughs> only know that there's this much of me, you know. So uh, I do need to to say uh, hello to somebody. I, I met someone this past uh, week at, uh, at Sukkot. Her name was Heather, or she's her name still is Heather, I think it is, unless she's changed it. But uh, we, I got to uh, to talk to her family, and uh, they went. She went back and and immediately started li listening to the podcast, and uh, said to tell you how much of a blessing it is, and I'll I'll pass that on to the other guys. So Heather, thank you so much for um, your thank encouragement, you. and uh, she's just one of these people that's just got this. Uh, she just brightens the, the, when she sits down at a table, it brightens it no matter what, where you're at. So Heather, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, that's good. Yeah. We, ours, um, ours was pretty low key. Um, if you listened to the last episode, you know why, uh, <laughs> still, you know, very, very much a newborn in our lives. Uh -huh. Um, but you know what I was, we, we were sitting and we set up a little, um, screened in tent thing and, uh, thankfully our cat, uh, obeyed the commandment for us most of the time uh, as far as sleeping in it like she I mean she was out there the whole time oh, okay. um, she loved being in there but <laughs> yeah, very spiritual cat but we were sitting in there one night extremely yeah yeah um, we were sitting in there one of the la last nights and just you know cold outside cuddled up as a family under a bunch of blankets and just talking about what we're thankful for and um, you know I had said that I'm just very thankful that God meets us where we are mm -hmm. and he meets us in each season whatever that season may be um because no two time periods of our lives are the same yeah they're all different they are to teach us different lessons and there's different contexts and different things you're feeling in each of those and i feel like i've gone through about 10 of those in about a year <laughs> um <laughs> but god has been very faithful to just meet with us in the way that we need and to help me feel like he understands mm -hmm. the season and that um I, I don't remember if i shared what i got on yom kippur but the the term was freedom from performance mm -hmm. and so he's just been you know reminding me of that that it's not about my performance of how i obey his commandments it's not about my performance of you know outward things but my heart posture and if my heart posture is correct toward him then he will be pleased and yeah so i was just very thankful for that well, you know, I, I was thinking about that, and I, actually, I used that statement in uh, talking with someone today, and um, I've kind of thought about that. It's, it's not about our performance. It's about his performance, which should then mm -hmm. affect our performance. Mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, in Messiah, our life should change, which is our performance based upon his life-transforming mm -hmm. uh, purpose in in in. Um, I was going back to this this thought today of last week we talked about the crisis of faith, and this week we're going to take that to another place 
which is something that I've used uh, for for many years. You've, of course, <laughs> you know, you're you're kind of the um, the kosher guinea pig with uh, some <laughs> of my teachings. <laughs> kind of try them out on you and see if they'll work. Yeah, but uh, there you go. This thing about owning it, mm -hmm. okay. And here's the here's the thing: when you have that crisis of faith, you can actually have this redeeming knowledge of the Almighty, and it be personal to you, but it not be really be personal to you. Do you mm -hmm. understand what I, you understand what I'm saying? I'm about halfway there, but I'm nodding like I'm 100 percent there. Okay. Okay. Well, you're nodding because you're working a lot and you have a baby crying at night, which is payback for your raising. <clears throat> okay, yeah. I'll that's another it. subject. <laughs> but uh, so we can come to this knowledge, this, this faith in the Almighty, but then kind of try to piggyback on everybody else. All right. Uh, I was looking at the verse in, uh, in, sec in, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. And it says, be willing to give a, let me just read it, how David Stern oh, translated yeah. it here. Uh, verse 15, but treat the Messiah as holy, as Adonai in your hearts, while remaining always ready to give a reasoned answer to anyone who asks you to explain the hope that you have. I, I thought that that those words there, a reasoned answer. But it does not say, Daniel, that if someone asks you about the hope that is in you, you go and find your your favorite teacher or a pastor yeah. or a friend yeah. or someone else. It says, no, you are to give mm -hmm. a reasoned answer for the hope that's in you. And that's what yeah. I'm talking about of owning it. It has mm -hmm. to be yours. The experience of of your faith in the almighty at some point is something you've got to own for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we glean from, from teachers, we glean from people we listen to, but you know, you're so right that, you know, each of us has a unique print on us from the almighty mm -hmm. and it is, um, I don't want to say crime. I want to say, I can't think of a better word though. So it's almost a crime to when someone asks you something mm -hmm. to give the answer that someone else would give. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that in like a, you know, you know, let's say you're just, you don't know, like you're on that journey right now. Like I, I don't want to, I don't want someone to feel the pressure of that, yeah. of like giving the right answer that exactly, but it's about you realizing that you have a journey, a very specific journey a very unique experience with God that no one else on the planet has, um, you know, because you are unique to him and you're going to perceive him a little differently or perceive uh, or walk through things a little differently. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if, if I were to give Mike Clayton's answer to someone, then on something that I can answer for myself, then I'm robbing them of what God gave me. I'm robbing them of what God put into me mm -hmm. to give to them. Um, and it's just, it's something that happens over time. You know, it's not, you have to, you have to have this relationship with God. You have to own your relationship with God first mm -hmm. and own the responsibilities that come along with that. And then you start to understand, you know, who is he to me? Because I was, I was exactly in that place when I was kind of first read that scripture, because it's one that people like to quote a lot. Mm -hmm. and make it seem like it is all like a teacher mindset but it was a very very freeing day to me when i realized that what peter is not saying is be ready with the right apologetics when someone <laughs> asks you a question that's good <laughs> it's not it's not about taking them to a place in scripture to answer their question it's not about like um you know theology the, all, the presenting theology to them and their answer for me yeah it's for me it is it's very simple like i'm not a scholarly person like i don't i i don't find uh, a thrill in like pouring over commentaries and that kind of thing it's it's just not me i'm not deep into theology i'm a little bit but not not to that extent and so when i read that and when i was feeling that you know it was like well goodness i'm having such a hard time like learning these things in that way and so when i realized like i don't have to 
Mm-hmm. It was it was great. It was it was amazing for me to learn that if someone asked me like, "How do you know God is real?" I could literally say, "Because I know Him," mm-hmm. and that is enough. Hmm. You know, going back to you know the the, the different teachers, uh, it, it's not that we that you don't go to. I mean, you got this thing of of not being extremely. This may be a hopefully is not a big surprise to people, but uh, I'm not extremely scholarly. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm not a real indoor person. Uh, I'm not a. I, I don't like computers, which is why I do like four programs on computer every week. Yeah. Um. I'm not a person that likes to just sit down and, and I like you, you know, me, I like to do something. Mm-hmm. And um, so for me, my study is a totally different realm, uh, but it is based upon uh, different teachers and different people that have poured into me. Uh, the The first thing that, uh, that happened to me back in, this is in the 1980s, late 1980s is that um uh, I had just come to, to faith in, in God uh, through the Messiah, and I'd grown up in a Baptist church, okay? I, I knew the, the accounts, the Bible accounts of Bible character of people. You know, I, uh, I knew the difference between Noah and Abraham and, and stuff like that, but I had to figure this out for myself, mm-hmm. and the way I did it is the Father gave me this amazing gift in that uh, I started working with a guy who owned a carpet cleaning company. I end up owning uh, my own company later on, but um, I was able to work commercial apartments, which means I had nobody to talk to. I had no distractions. And this is in the day of the Sony Walkman, okay? Cassette deck, Sony Walkman. (laughs) And we had two uh, radio stations in Tucson, Arizona that were Christian stations. One was more of a fundamental base. The other one was a little bit more charismatic. And I spent my whole day for over a year listening to different teachers. Mm-hmm. Uh, J. Vernon McGee, uh, Dr. James Dobson, Chuck Swindoll, um, Raul Reese, Chuck Smith. I mean, the whole day. Because I found out later on, somebody said this, that we will normally only have in our life about two original thoughts. <laughs> now, consider that as someone who speaks full time for, a, you know, this is what I do for a living, if you can imagine, mm-hmm. if you, if people can imagine that. But uh, if I'm going to base everything I do on my two originally thoughts, original thoughts, uh, it's going to take a, just a couple of minutes before I become very boring. Yeah. Because I have nothing to say. So, I am a compilation mm-hmm. of all of these different people that poured into my life. Mm-hmm. And that's true from my Sunday school teachers to my vacation Bible school teachers to teachers that I listen to today. I am have become a compilation, but I've taken a little bit from Eddie Chumney and from Brad mm-hmm. Scott and from Barry Phillips and, and all these different people. And then I've made it into my own. Exactly. Because if there was a mirror image of you doing the same exact thing, other side of town, similar background, listening to the same exact teachings, they would become a totally different person. Like, you know, if you took half A and you were like, man, this is amazing. I love this stuff. But half B for you was like, you know, that's pretty good, but I don't, Mm -hmm. you know, that doesn't really, um, it doesn't seep deeply in me. That other person on the other side of town would be the exact opposite. You know, Mm -hmm. like, you know, truth is truth and truth gets into us and we repeat truth. And like, yes, we listen to these people. We listen to teachers and, um, you know, just various people. And um, we, we, we receive things from that and it becomes part of who we are for what we receive. You know, we mm-hmm. listen, we're like that. I like that. I don't like that. I like that. I don't like that. I want to research that one some more. I want to think on that one, chew on that one. Um, but just it, realizing that, no matter who you listen to, you're not supposed to become a carbon copy of them. You're supposed mm-hmm. to take what they have and make it your own, just like you're saying. Yeah, I was actually uh, in, in North Florida. Eddie Chumney was there, and I was doing the, uh, the my teaching on the show far this week. And I was talking about you know you know the teaching very well. You can do it in my voice. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the the concept of every show far is different. 
you know, there's, they're, they're different sizes, they're different shapes, they're, they come from different animals, all these things. And I, I said, you know, the last thing that the, 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 the world needs is my impression of Eddie Chumney, because I don't have the brain cells for that to begin with, but we don't need the, the world doesn't need another Mike Clayton, mm -hmm. but I believe that the world needs the Mike Clayton that's here. Mm -hmm. And so for everybody that's out there, the, the world doesn't need your imitation of somebody else. No. But the world needs you. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm, I'm, I think I'm known for is I speak pretty passionately. And I found that you can only speak passionately on something you own. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time taking someone else's teaching. Mm -hmm. and becoming passionate about it. But when yeah. I've figured it out from different angles, and I've read the scripture, and I've I've listened to this teacher and this teacher, and all of a sudden, the light goes on. I can become passionate about that. Yeah. You see, passion is something, and I just coined, I, I just was thinking about this today, and I'm this will be on my Facebook uh, sometime in the next few days. Um, passion is caught. It's not taught. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any way to teach a person how to be passionate. No, not with reality. Okay. You can teach a false passion, but you cannot teach a true passion. It has to well, be called. Especially because of the very nature of passion is something that is, it's unique. Like you can't, you can't teach a person who is a musician to be, passionate about I mean, even if you could teach passion you couldn't teach someone who is a musician to be passionate about sports mm -hmm. like it doesn't work that way because you, you can't you can't shove something that's not meant to you can't you know round peg square hole that kind of mm -hmm. thing you you can't push it 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 does have to be learned and um, something i'm thinking about right now too is one of the guys in our group um you know, amazing journey he's on uh it's a pleasure to watch it <sighs> and i was having a conversation with him and you know, we were just talking a little bit. I was telling him how much I appreciated that he was coming and, you know, that it was just great to have him and his family. Um, and we had a little conversation and he was saying how, you know, during worship, you know, he would be standing there and observing me playing, you know, leading the worship, everyone else um, participating, mm -hmm. engaging. And he's like, you know, I know there's something going on here because I'm watching all these people like, and I'm watching their faces and their reactions and, and all this kind of stuff. So I know there's something going on here, but I don't, I don't feel it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he, he had a conversation with you and essentially what he came to realize is that studying in depth, the scripture, that is what he is passionate about. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, he is passionate about it. Like he's, he's just on fire right now. And it's just oh, yeah. wonderful, wonderful to see. Um, but just realizing, like, you know, each of us as believers are called to participate in worship, in scripture, in study, in prayer, all these things. But you don't have to be 100% uh, the best at the best. That's a bad term. Mm -hmm. At any of those things. Like, if you're that kind of person who's standing there in worship and you acknowledge his presence, you acknowledge who he is, you acknowledge the importance and the weight of what is going on in the room but you can't enter in as easy as that person, that's okay. You mm -hmm. know, maybe you are the person that is much more engaged when it comes to the scripture. You're much more engaged when it comes to prayer. Like we were never meant to be all rounded. You know, we have our strengths and our weaknesses and it's, it's not a weakness to find out what your weaknesses are. It's a strength to know your weaknesses. Probably the greatest strength a person can have is knowing their weaknesses. Yeah. Uh, I would go to that point. Uh, you know, if we look at like last week's uh, Torah portion at the end of Deuteronomy was the blessing of Moses unto the tribes of Israel. And it is kind of a, it's, it's an offshoot of the last chapter of Genesis, which is mm -hmm. Jacob's words unto the 12 boys. And you, you find in each one of them that they're all different mm -hmm. and that they have different different roles, different places. Uh, but when they, when everybody comes together, 
it makes up a whole, it's, it's kind of like a diamond. If you dissect a diamond and you see the different facets of it, you can focus on one facet and it may be a pretty thing, but when you bring them all together as one, that's when the true beauty comes out, uh, the, the light refraction off of each individual. Now, let me take you to another place. And and for anybody that's listening, we don't talk about this a lot, uh, you know, and where we're going. I think that all of us, you know, the other guys, when they're on, this is something that's in the back of my mind during the week, but we on purpose do not sit down and discuss and come up with a blueprint for the program. Uh, so it, it's more, you know, kind of it, it's fresh. It's the, raw. the flow. Yeah. I yeah. want it to be fresh. Um, is, or how do I ask the question really? Can feeling be mistaken for passion or is passion a feeling? Did I ask, did I ask that? Well, Hmm. yeah, I I think, I, I think what you're trying to ask is, how deep is passion like how deep does it go and can we can we identify it beyond feeling or do they go hand in hand or are they just exclusive from each other something like that well can 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 you have passion without feeling at least for a time let me let me take you to this uh we were in israel together 2012 and uh, we were up on on the on harbor cod the mount of blessing with the uh, the pruning and you said to me one day you said i just i'm not feeling it you're mm-hmm. looking around at other people and uh they're like you know talking about this and their 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 feelings and their emotions and their their in tears and all these things and you're like i'm not feeling it what's wrong with me mm-hmm. but yet you came back with passion mm-hmm. uh another person who was very emotional while we were there came back with no passion for it mm-hmm. in fact you know bought a new truck and kind of forgot about the whole thing uh not not being judgmental there it just something didn't stick okay so if we're if you're looking for feeling to um as, as a as as a a proof of your passion it it may not be there. Mm-hmm. It may be that the the feeling comes later, but it, it's not necessarily the proof. Yeah, outward absolutely. emotion, outward outward experience, mm-hmm. is not always a proof of what's inside. Yeah, and I can't remember if we talked about this a few weeks ago or not, but you know it's worth talking about again. Where you know sometimes in our faith, our relationships, our jobs, you know, lots of things. We fake it till we make it. Mm-hmm. And okay. I've I've always thought of that as like a negative thing. Like you fake it till you make it. Oh, you're just faking it. Like you don't, you don't, you're not invested in this thing. Mm-hmm. But there's no way for you to understand everything about what your fate, like, you know, for, for, um, for example, the Lulav. Mm-hmm. I don't understand everything surrounding the Lulav. Like it's a very, like if you ask anyone on the street, like if you describe to some random person on the street the commandment of the lulav, <laughs> I mean they would look like you, like you have four eyeballs. Or it's or just Alex, it's very. As Alex said, uh, and this is a person that's part of our congregation. Uh, he didn't. He was just introduced to it last year, and he's he came away going, "I don't understand that plant that plant dance." Plant dance exactly. <laughs> You know, there's just parts of it that we're not going to understand, Whatever. but we're called to obey. And so, you know, and so you take maybe a few years ago and you compare it to this year for me. This year, the lulav was very meaningful. You yeah. know, this year, waving the lulav with my family in in our room, you know, in our living room, you know, putting some music on and just absolutely having a blast and dancing. Like that was really the most special part about Sukkot this year. And so what did I do? I faked it till I made it. <laughs> You know, well, last the last few years, it was just it was something I did because I'm commanded to. I'm going to do my best to obey the commandments, even if I don't understand them. Um, you know, not out of legalism, but out of my love for the Father. Like I want to please Him and I want to obey what He says to the best of my ability. 
but I don't always understand exactly why. But as you do it, the mm-hmm. action is obedience. The action is worship. The action produces feeling. Like the action produces understanding, which produces mm-hmm. the feeling eventually. But yeah, you're right. It's not based on the feeling. Well, you know, in the, in the book of Exodus, as the Hebrews are gathered around Mount Sinai, their response was, Na'ase vanishma, which means uh, we will do and we will obey. Uh, Barry Phillips actually has a song that he wrote on this, Na'ase vanishma. We will do and we will obey. And this comes out into a teaching, a rabbinic teaching, that is, we will do and we will understand. This goes totally against uh, hum- human makeup. Mm, I'm not going to believe it unless I can understand it. Oh, especially for me. I mean, I'm a why person. All right, I just am a why, and and I I, I had to lose that. Now I don't. I, I keep that with people because I don't trust people a lot sometimes. But when it comes to the Almighty, the He said to do. Mm-hmm. And the understanding comes forth. Uh, yeah. Example, back in the early day, my early days of coming into this walk, um, I start. I, I looked at the commandment that said you were to put a blue thread in the corners of your garments. And uh, I was like, okay, well, I, at that in that day, the, uh, the snail had just been found and they were just getting the processing and everything. And so four blue threads of the tekelet, uh, which we believe is the biblical blue there, four blue threads cost $150, and there's a six-month waiting list on it. But I wanted to do it now, and I didn't have $150 because I, I, I had you as a baby. Um, so I I went to Walmart. I actually took a uh, the, the zeet zeet, the, uh, the woven, you know, the, the threads that we wear. I took one apart, and I thought, you know, if I can take one apart, and I've got three others here, all still tied, I can figure out how to put it back together. And so I went to the store and actually to Walmart and I bought blue thread and that was my first seat seat. And I didn't understand it. I didn't understand that you can preach the gospel from there. I didn't understand that this was a wonderful message from the father. I didn't understand that it was like a spiritual wedding ring. I didn't understand any of that. I just knew the said in the book of Numbers, put a blue thread in the corners of your garment. Now I understand it a lot more. So it comes back to the concept, Na'ase Vanishma, which goes back to own it. Mm-hmm. Own it for yourself. You know, if if the UPS driver comes to your door and you've got a, a, a mezuzah on the door and he says, what's that? And you say, well, it's some Jewish thing that's in the Bible and my preacher told me to put it on the door. Uh, that's not owning it, folks. You got to understand, why are you doing it? Now, you may have done it, and that's good, but now figure it out. Mm-hmm. So that and when so they come almost, to the door and they, yeah. and they ask you, you can give an account for the faith, the hope that is in you. Go ahead. It's almost like this this strange cycle because, you know, we're talking about it, and it's almost like, okay, which one comes first? Like this one or this one? Like does this come before this? And so it's like you have the passion. And you have the understanding and you have the doing and you have the owning and it's like, okay, well, goodness gracious, which do I do first? Do I have to like figure out how to own it? And that produces the passion and all the, and the answer is probably yes. All of them at once, you know, it's it's this, this cycle of, you know, who you are and who you're called to be Mm -hmm. and you own that. And then you start doing the things you're supposed to do that you're commanded to and you own that. And as you're owning that and doing it, then you start understanding it and then you start owning it more. And then as you own it more, you understand it more and then it becomes more of your passion. And then you own that whole thing over and over again. And it's just this cycle that continues upward. So, you know, I know that there's some over analytical people out there because I'm one of them, you know, <laughs> I mean, no. you take, no, I mean, I have some stories. Why of like, you tell just, your mom that really... she doesn't know that either. Oh, please don't tell her. I, I'm trying to keep from her. Um, <laughs> and so I can, I can hear the questions. Like, like I just said, like, what do I do first? And so take a deep breath and just realize that it's not about the chronology of it. It's not about like, what do I do first? It's just like you spend time with the father and you 
you know, you, you take those things we were talking about, like, who are you and mm -hmm. where are you from? You take those concepts and you build upon them because now you know who you are and you know who you're supposed to start to become, or you realize that there's someone specific you're supposed to become and you just walk it out and you have to go through the process. You have to go through that cyclical process I just described. It's not a one and done kind of thing. It's not a, you know, you just, you listen to one podcast and all of a sudden you got all this stuff, you know, like for me, you know, I was, I was in Israel, I wasn't feeling it, but I was there and it was soaking into me. And as I went back and continued, you know, reading the scripture and, um, you know, just spending time with God, it just started to sink in. And then I had, and then I could recollect, it's almost like he was showing me more about it after I left there. And so you just walk through it. You just walk through the process and stuff pops up. Mm -hmm. So how do we start? I, I'm going to give people a, a very simple beginning here this week. Um, you know, we talked about in previous programs, the, the concept that the beginning of scripture was actually at Revelation chapter 21, and then he backed up and began the beginning. Um, so this, this week, this Shabbat, this, this Saturday, uh, begins, we're actually in the week prior to it. It begins the begin, the, it begins the beginning. Yeah, that's bad English of a new Torah cycle. So the first five books of scripture, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And that's broken up into 54 segments that we read through the year. Now, I have on my jointoashem.org site, I do a weekly Torah commentary. Uh, it's about 50 minutes. And so uh, if people want to, to join me in that, that's great. But I really challenge people to, to go online, get that, uh, that schedule, and spend this year, begin this year by reading from the beginning. It's, it's very simple. It's five, six chapters every week. But, and then, you know, find teachers that can help you along the way. But could we, this year, this is something that I, I, I've done many times, but I've, I've really come to a, a conclusion that I, I've got to really dive into this this year. We need to look at the scripture for what it says. Not trying to figure out something, you know? It's yeah. like he said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, I'm good with that. And on the first day, there was this. And the second day, there was, this. okay, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to try to make it into, you know, something that's not, he said he created it in six days. I believe that. And I think I can mm -hmm. go to creation research and all these different places and, and back that up. Because if yeah. I can't believe, passionate belief, passionately believe Genesis chapter one, verse one. If there's a seed of doubt of anything in my mind in Genesis one, one, by the time I get to the book of revelation, that seed of doubt is going to be a huge tree bearing fruit of doubt in my life. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing as you were leading up to that. I was like, you know what? I bet he's going to say this because that's what I'm feeling too. And, you know, just accepting the simplicity of scripture. Um, and I think it's a great place to start because, you know, Yeshua didn't tell us all to be like the Pharisees, you know, and, and I mean, strictly in the, you know, how learned they were because they were very learned. Oh, yeah. um, he told us to be like children mm -hmm. and children don't understand the deep sewed level parts of scripture they run around the kitchen and they laugh and they play and you know they ask fun questions and all this kind of stuff and they just they just they just want to they just want to be happy and have a a good family really and mm -hmm. so it's not irresponsible to want to take a simple look at the scripture. Um, you know, going back to my, what, what I said earlier, you know, I am very comfortable leaving very simple answers for people because I believe that much more than a good answer to a question, a uh, evidence of my relationship with mm -hmm. Yeshua will send the bigger testimony. It will yeah. send the bigger message to someone. And I think that's true for everyone. And some people it's going to be your calling to, you know, 
be strong in apologetics mm-hmm. and be that kind of person on the debate stage, but not everyone, not me. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm very comfortable with that now, you know, and you could call you know, you could say I'm wrong for that. And it doesn't really affect me because I am on a process. I am learning more. I'm not stopping my learning, you know, and neither are yeah. you and neither should anyone. You're always learning. You're yeah. always, you know, going deeper, but it's not, that's not the purpose of it. You're not going deeper for the sake of going deeper. You're going deeper. I, you know, I can't remember exactly what we said earlier, but it was that purpose. Like it is his, it is the relationship with him and his presence that causes the depth, not the mm-hmm. depth causing the relationship with him. Yeah. True. Hopefully uh, that yeah, came across we're, we're called to, to come to him as little children, not childish. We're to be childlike, not childish. Mm-hmm. Uh, but childlike is accepting things as, as I wasn't able to come out, but uh, you said that Irene, your, your daughter, uh, when she, you gave her the lulav and she w- didn't want to get rid of it, <laughs> she just wanted to keep it and keep, you know, mm-hmm. keep dancing around. And she, I mean, if you'd ask her, she can barely say lulav. Yeah. You know? She can barely say Ethrog. I can't even say Ethrog half the time because I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. But she showed passionate obedience, even mm-hmm. though she doesn't even know she was being obedient. Mm-hmm. So we need to learn to be childlike, but not childish. Last yeah. words? Uh, yeah, I was. I'm, I try to be very intentional to teach that to my children, like. You know, it's not about how we do this. It's not about like holding it in the right way and shaking it just the right way. It's like we have this lulav and we want the kingdom of God to come. So we're going to shake it this way. We're going to shake it this way and this way and this way and toward heaven and toward earth. And we say, Father, let your kingdom come. And we would say something like that every night after we would wave it, you know, while the music was going, because it's about the big picture. It's not about the how. It's about like what's coming. And so, you know, review who you are and where you came from and own it and walk through this process of doing and understanding and becoming passionate and just walk through the process. And as that, uh, the verse in second Timothy says, you know, we are to treat him as holy. So in, in doing these things and teaching our children, your, your children, uh, how to wave a lulav or, or all these different things we're to teach them, a joy that's in it, but also within the boundaries that this is something holy we're doing. So it should never be allowed to be just a flippant toy in their hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Bezrat Hashem, God willing, we'll have uh, the other two, David and Ryan, on next week with us. And uh, yeah. then I got to make a decision if I am committed enough to all of you guys. To get up in is in at two o'clock in the morning in Israel to do this or not. So I'm still kind of contemplating that one. Yeah, I'm still contemplating. <laughs> we'll find You're out. You're gonna do it. I think probably. 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 <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. So everyone, uh live life mm-hmm. on purpose. Remember the verse in uh, in Jeremiah that he has plans for us, not of evil, but for good, because he's given us purpose for our lives. Till next week. See you guys later.